Hey everybody, hope you guys are all having an amazing day. I'm here right now with Ashlyn Idu with Burroughs Law and she's here to talk us, take us through her story of how she got into law and uh, the stuff that she's doing with, uh, with Burroughs Law. So Ash, let's go back to your story. How did you get into to this career? Well, how I got into this career is that my mom is a lawyer as well. So grew up kind of around her uh, law firm where she's now a partner. Mm -hmm. Growing up, you know, I've always really enjoyed to read. Uh, I have a brother and sister who also enjoy to read. And she just really encouraged us to pursue whatever we wanted. Nice. And law was the thing that I chose. <laughs> nice. So how many years have you been at it now? Um, I've been practicing since August 2015. So oh, about a year awesome. and a half now. So awesome. fairly junior still. Awesome. So, so right now you're with uh, Bureau's Laws, Bureau's Law. Tell me how this firm operates and how it fits with your own personal mission. So Burroughs Law, we are a boutique law firm. Uh, we have three main focus areas at our firm, although we do practice in other areas as well. Mm -hmm. So our three focus areas are family law, wills and estates, and real estate law. Nice. It's myself and Lori Burroughs who practice together. Um, Lori is going into his 30th year of practice, so he's been practicing for quite some time. He's an excellent mentor. We have a yeah. small staff. Yeah, and, and there's so many questions that I get on a, on a personal level uh, from aspiring entrepreneurs to established entrepreneurs about, uh, you know, a lot of them are kind of scared to go to a lawyer because they don't want to break the bank. So what's your recommendation to those people out there who, who might just have a simple question that might really not really cost them a whole lot? What's your recommendation for them? I think a lot of people have an idea that, you know, lawyers are unapproachable. Mm -hmm. And our firm really prides itself in being an approachable law firm. Yeah. So it's great, you know, um, if people want to pick up the phone and give us a call. Most lawyers are very open to having a conversation with nice. a client, meeting with a client, or helping to direct a client or a potential client to resources that they would would require. Right, right, right. Let's go back to your, your own roots and your base. So where where's home for you? Home for me is Saskatoon. I was I've been born and raised in nice. Saskatoon, lived here forever. Um, my parents both reside in Saskatoon still. Yeah. I'm the oldest in my family. I have a younger brother and a younger sister nice. who are still in Canada, close close to close to Saskatchewan yeah. still. Um, my husband and I both enjoy the city. We have yeah. a young daughter who's seven and yeah. we have another one on the way. So awesome. So you're, you have a family of uh, business people, obviously, that, uh, do you have any mentors that you've looked up to uh, that have really inspired you to take this role? Yes, I, I think that mentorship is really important for any young person who is starting out. So my biggest mentor um, in life and in my practice has been my mom. She's always really encouraged um, us to, you know, pursue the career path that we chose and always has encouraged us and is always very, very um, helpful and you know helping us. Yeah. Um, Nick Stushnoff is her partner at her law firm, which is called Stushnoff Bitzer. Nick was my principal when I was articling, and he's always been a wonderful resource for me as well and a great mentor. Yeah. And then of course um, Lori Burroughs, who I practice with. Mm. Um, he's taken me under his wing um, yeah. since I started practicing in family law. Yeah. And he is a wonderful lawyer, and he's taught me nice. everything I need to know. <laughs> so, it sounds like you you are on an entrepreneurial journey. What's the similarities between running uh, your law practice versus uh, another type of business? Well, I think that law and running another type of business are really similar in a lot of different ways. You know, we have to manage staff, yeah. managing clients. Um, we have overhead that we have to look after at our law firm. Um, you know, just the relationships that come with any sort of business venture. Mm -hmm. I think that that's always something that is yeah, a similarity yeah, yeah. between the law practice and and, any other type of business. And you have children, you, you're married, you, you sound like you have a very busy life. So how do you manage all of that aside from handling other people's uh, obstacles? You know, because that's what law, it seems like a lot of people have these obstacles, then they come to you for help. So how do you manage your, your day job and, and, and your home life? Well, I think that we, you know, I have a supportive, a very supportive husband and we do run a very tight schedule <laughs> in our family, yeah. as I'm sure most families do. <laughs> yeah. We're pretty organized people, so I think yeah. that's the biggest thing right now is keeping organized and yeah. keeping up to date with each other about our schedules. Awesome. Do you have any more tips for anyone out there who's, uh, you know, either a startup entrepreneur or expanding entrepreneur? They're having a hard time uh, prioritizing, and uh, maybe they might have kids in daycare or after-school programs. You know, I, I, even for myself, I have a hard time uh, with with uh, making sure everything's on on par so I can continue to get ahead and my wife can continue to get ahead and everything to try to gel as, as, as uh, neatly as possible. Although it's not always that way. What are your, <laughs> what's your advice on that? 
Well, I think perseverance is a big one. So yeah. setting ach achievable goals for oneself yeah. and being able to, you know, look forward and think, creating timelines and how can I work towards a goal and also mm -hmm. asking for help if you need it. A lot of people right. are really, um, you know, really like to help others out, especially when yeah. you're first um, starting out, yeah. picking mentors carefully, yeah. keeping your network um, tight and knowing exactly who you can ask for for help and resources. And yeah. I think that's the best advice I could give. <laughs> and let's tie it into our next question. What advice do you have anyone out there who is looking to get into law? Um, I think that advice that I would have for anyone who wants to get into law is just to remain focused. Um, mm -hmm. it, law can be a little bit, you know, challenging. It's a lot of, a lot of reading and a lot of writing and note taking. Mm -hmm. So just to remain focused, um, be clear on what the requirements are when mm -hmm. you're pursuing a career in law. Yeah. And um, picking something that you enjoy as well, I think, is mm -hmm. really, really important. I know yeah. for myself personally, I thought I would be a criminal law lawyer, but I, I didn't like criminal law as much as okay. I thought that yeah. I would. So, you know, picking a career path and sticking with it and persevering through yeah. it. Yeah, I think a lot of people uh, just, you know, for myself, I, I try to do what uh, other people were doing right. And I didn't realize, I, 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 I found myself getting too far away from my own strengths, you know, and the things that I like to do. So that's a great example right there. How many years did it take to, to, to finish your law? Um, I, I did an undergraduate degree first at the University of Saskatchewan. So mm -hmm. that was a four year degree program. And then I did um, two years of law school because mm -hmm. I went to school overseas and another year for articling. So wow. seven wow. years, I guess, total. So this is this is the part where a lot of people like to, to hear <laughs> about. Um, Take us through, you know, one to two examples of of obstacles that you've had to overcome, either as a student or uh, even now when as you're pr practicing your profession uh, of law. Obstacles that you've had to overcome. I mean, I guess in the practice of law. Um, there's always dif there's always difficult clients. Mm. So I mean, people setting maybe yeah. unreasonable expectations on yeah. what they would you know right. like to see as an outcome. Yeah. Um, I'm a people pleaser, so I always you know would like for people to be happy, and I would like to tell right. them what they want to hear. But in law and practice, you, you can't you can't do that. You can't yeah. tell people what they want to hear all of the time. You yeah. have to advise them accordingly to their specific fact scenario or situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Uh, so. Here's another one I want to ask you. So what has been an influential piece in your life or point in your life that that inspired you to, to not only take on this profession, but also to inspire you to, to lead this type of life that uh, you're now leading? Because I'm assuming you're, leading, you're living the life that you've always wanted to live. So is there a point in your life where you can remember and tie back, I don't know how many years, uh, where it, it said, you know what, this is what I want to do. Um, I think, you know, when I was going through the application process for law school, I realized that I, I really wanted to be a lawyer at mm -hmm. that point. Mm -hmm. And of course, there were some challenges along yeah. the way, but it's always, you know, I, that was something that I really wanted to do. So I set an attainable goal for myself. And Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so I actually know a lot of people who are uh, going through law right now. Uh, they're going through their challenges right now. So let's speak, speak specifically to the people who are in post-secondary right now because there's a lot of people out there who are who are trying to try things and it might not, they might actually, like for myself, I'm, I'm a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. And somehow I became an entrepreneur and I'm assuming there's people out there right now in, in post-secondary who are studying and you might actually do something else. How can law be transferred into other professions? There's lots of things that people could do with a law degree other than practicing law. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people will go on to work, you know, for different corporations. Um, there's contract right. writers. Um, there's people who will be go into, you know, advisory roles mm -hmm. or work for something you like the police or the RCMP. Yes. They all employ lawyers. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, one of my uh, my, my best buddies, uh, Jenkins Media, he, he's, I didn't even know he was a lawyer until like the third video he did for me. It was crazy. So uh, he told me his story of, you know, I started by, by practicing law and on doing videos. So, you know, it, it's true that, you know, just because you're studying something doesn't mean that that's going to be the only life for you. You can, you can use it, what you learned, and apply it to different things in your life. Like I said, I'm a teacher. Somehow I became an entrepreneur, but somehow I'm still using my degree because I use my teaching skills to help teach through the academy and through my motivational talks and seminars across Canada. So it's been a, a great time with that. Uh, so, Ashley, any more words of encouragement out there to any aspiring or, or, or uh, existing entrepreneurs out there who want to grow their business and how you can help them? I think just to do your best and to remain focused and to persevere is really the best advice that I give. Set an attainable goal for yourself and just follow through with it and mm -hmm. good things will come. And don't be afraid to reach out. Uh, Ashley is always available. Where can we reach you? Um, so my office is located in downtown Saskatoon. It's called Burroughs Law. 
We're located on 21st Street East and I could be um, reached at my office. The direct line at my office is 477-3333. Awesome. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you got some value from this presentation. And again, don't be afraid to reach out uh, for myself. You know, I, uh, I, I wouldn't be where I am today had I not uh, Given, been given the advice from lawyers, uh, and especially if you have those questions who are, that are very touchy, consult a lawyer because you don't want to be, uh, you don't want things to haunt you in, in your in your future. Uh, I'll give you one example. Okay, when I was applying for a trademark, my first brand, um, I applied the, for the trademark myself. I didn't consult a lawyer. Okay, and what happened was I did such a poor job of, of the application that it came back and it was rejected right away. Okay, so I immediately lost like three three to five hundred dollars right away off the bat, okay? I immediately went to a lawyer and they did it for me. Sure, I had to pay like double that fee, but what happened was I didn't have to worry about that. I, I knew that it was gonna be taken care of in the right way and what happened was we eventually got the trademark registered and so on. So that was just about an example of how important it is to, to have a lawyer and uh, I'm really glad that you came in here today. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having have me. Have an amazing day, we'll see you.